eller Jackson. The lost penny lane Football on the brain The stew calls cows The cost no face of the house It's the scouse house It's the scouse house Hello, in this episode you will hear John May talk about Sweeps Barbershop and Coffee Shop. And it's time for me to thank them because Sweeps by TNT have supported this episode of the Scouse House. It's a traditional style, family-friendly barbers. Go get your hair cut. Some stick has been given to me, the way my hair looks. And you know what? Fair enough. I went down there, I got my hair sorted out by Sweeps, and it's looking far, far better. So... Sweeps Barbershop is the place to be. It's on County Road. Check him out. Okay, welcome back to the Scouse House. I'm so excited today because I've got a mate of mine sat in front of me. He's responsible for more Scouse comedy characters than Phil Redmond. It's John May, everybody. How Thanks are you, for mate? having me, Andrew. Thanks How for having you? me. I'm all right. It's yeah. great to see you. Uh-huh. It's great to see you, mate. Now, first things first, what do you see yourself as? Actor or comedian? Oh, um, actor. Who does comedy? Yeah, I'm an actor first, yeah. Comedy's just an, a, a part of it, isn't it? It's just an extension of it. You know what I mean? It's an it? avenue. <laughs> That's what it is. It's just an avenue. It's a vehicle. For... <laughs> it's a vehicle. <laughs> for expression. Yes, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a yeah. medium. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all comedy is. So, so I'm actually a better straight actor so than I am comedy. Actor slash comedian. Yeah, I'll just throw that in now. Slash model. Yeah. For Giacomo. <laughs> you say Giacomo, mate, you've been up and down the length of the UK recently, haven't you? Yeah, I'm the only cut man to have walked the country and gone fat. <laughs> That's not true, mate. You're looking It is, no, it you, is. I'm looking probably, great. I probably put a stone on. Just all them bakeries along the way. <laughs> a few Greg's, was it? Pork pies. Yeah. Yeah, it was um well, you I have to try the, the local delicacies, Andrew. Of course you did. Do you know what I mean? Put, I was in Cornwall eating, eating Cornish pasties. Put money back into the UK economy as yeah. you as you Going up and down for for uh, for charity. That's it. Deep fried Mars bars in Scotland. <laughs> well, there's a limit to uh, deep to fried cream eggs, right? So I went. No. To this, wait, I went to this chippy and he's done deep fried cream eggs, and I was like, "Get one of them as well, please, mate." And I got <laughs> it, and you know what? Boom! It was lovely. It was a taste sensation. Deep fried cream eggs. Mm, it just worked. Was it? It just becomes something else. Yeah, it was lovely. Well, last time I saw you, you were saying that you were off the chocolate, and now you're told you were on the deep fried cream X. I needed the energy. I needed the calories. <laughs> no, All right, yeah. that's 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 fair enough. We might we might chat a little bit more about about your walk, John, and, and stuff like that. But for for anyone who doesn't know you, as as uh, as we mentioned, here, actor, comedian in Liverpool, uh, I would say you've sort of um, your career's really exploded. Say in the last, would you say three or four years in in particular, and we'll talk about. Stuff around that, but let's go back to to the beginnings of John May. What humble the, beginnings? The humble beginnings. The genesis story of John May. Where whereabouts in Liverpool are, are you from, John? I'm from County Road. Yeah, I'm from the bright lights of Walton. Yeah, originally I was from um, sort of Breck Road, Anfield area, and then I moved to County Road, Macon Street, when I was five, and I sort of stayed there till I was about. I will have always been there. Do you know what I mean? I had a shop on County Road and, you know, I'm a part of that community, if you like, yeah. What, what was it like growing up around County there? Road? Yeah. County Road was sad. County Road was actually quite nice. You know, we used to have the Walton Festival every year. We used to come down County Road with the parades and all stuff like that. And um, County Road was sad. What was the Walton Festival? I've not heard of it. It was the Walton Festival. Um, it was in Walton Park, so once a year, just like... Yeah, we, we, it was just, we'd have a fair, we'd have local this, local that, da 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 And you'd have a parade down County Road, like, you know, you'd have Miss Walton, stuff like that. <laughs> no, it was good, yeah. Miss Walton? Yeah, they brought did it back recently. With, did you go out with any of them? Miss Walton? I've been through every Miss Walton. <laughs> I was a judge. <laughs> Uh, it's not going I can believe that. <laughs> I can believe it as well. Um, so which, which school, schools did you go to then? Yeah, so I went to St. Francis Sales 
And then I went to Archbishop Bech. Okay. Mm. And uh, You recently asked me back to do a talk for year sevens. That's when you know you've made it, isn't it, John? Yeah. yeah. When the school when the school gets in touch and says I, I knew I was special, I thought I always said they'll have me back one day. Yeah. They'll ask me back. I'm st- and I'll tell them kids. But I never. It, it was lovely. I'm still waiting for Anfield. Uh, is that where you're to from? In, to get in touch. Is that where you're or, from? Or Gattaca, although that's since demolished the one I went to. So I, I thought you were they... like proper Waterloo, mate. I I've thought you had, were like Crosby. I mentioned this to, on the episode with Rachel Rhodes. I've had a bit of a nomadic uh, upbringing around Liverpool because I'm from a broken home, John. So okay. went to, yeah, no. Uh, Mum, Anfield, went to school, Anfield. Then it was up to Southend, Gattaca. My dad's really? like bootle boy. Wow. Yeah, and now live in Crosby. This is why I, this is why I wanted to do this this podcast. I'm going to spend the second half of my life on the Wibble, so I think. You, so you've been South End and North End? Exactly. Well, deep North, basically Southport. Do you know what I mean? Not quite, not quite. Mm, Sefton. Although no purple bin in, uh, in, in Sefton. Well, what, what, what do you think of that? Do you think you need a purple bin to be a, a scouser or...? I, I, no, I don't. I think it's all silly, this bin malarkey. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you're not defined by your colour of your bin. Do you know what I mean? You get these divvies that go, oh, what colour's your bin? Who's a hast? That's, that's, that's a very Liverpool thing. Do you know why it's purple? Not, not defined by the colour of your skin. No, no, no. You're not defined the colour of your, your bin. <laughs> the colour of your bin. Um, uh, do you know why it's purple? Because of Liverpool, isn't it? Red, blue, no? Yeah, I think it's a mixture of the two. Purple. It is, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Because <laughs> let me have that one on. You know what I mean? That was like five minutes of content. No, I think most people know that, John. Do they? Well, do you want to explain it again? For the... No, the moment's gone. Were you into the uh, the acting? Uh, uh, did you know no. that was drama no, was part not at of school? No, no, I wasn't. But it's always sort of a fancied. But I just had this working class mentality that people like me don't do that. Do you know what I mean? But I always thought I could do that, and I'd watch people on the telly and think I could do better than that. I had a similar experience watching um, the Great British Bake Off. I uh, used to watch them cake making cakes, and we're I used back, to think back to bakery everybody, and I used to think. I could do better than that. So I started making cakes. I started making cheesecakes. And I am absolutely... Yeah. Some people just know me for my cheesecakes, aren't you? You know what I mean? It's going to happen, isn't it? John May, Celebrity Bake Off winner, 2025. I'm calling it now. Yeah, I learned to make cheesecakes. I'm just I'm just romancing about it now. Yeah. I was doing a bodybuilding show, as you do. and well, um, you, In the competition? Yeah. Oh, do you know I've done that? No. Yeah, I went from like... I went from like, I'm five foot seven, I went from 17 stone to like 10 and a half stone. I actually won an award at the UK BFF. He said, we've never seen nothing like it, we'd like to give you this award. Yeah, it was on the news and everything. John May's got abs. When you've got an idea in your head then, you've got... A hyper-focus, yeah. You're driven. Yeah, yeah. It's ADHD. You reckon? Yeah. There's a lot, lot of talk about that at the moment, isn't there? A lot of comed- I mean, every other comedian, it seems, has, has got ADHD, apparently. or. People don't act... Can, can I explain ADHD, Andrew? By all means. So a lot of people don't really understand how ADHD works. So it took me years to figure this out, right? So when people got ADHD, um, they just think people are hyperactive. They say the faddy. They say the this, the the naughty. So you, you you get brought up not fitting in. So you get a message as a child in school, like by the teacher, get out because they can't cope. Do so you always get this negative message? But what ADHD is, right? So you have receptors in your brain. Right, and they deliver the dopamine, and the dopamine is the reward system, right? So, I don't think you've got ADHD. You seem pretty chill. You're getting levels. Have you got ADHD? You, you seem pretty thingy, right? So, when you've got ADHD, you're not getting enough dopamine, right? So, people who've got ADHD, they're like scavengers for dopamine. That's why they're always on the phone. That's why they end up maybe doing drugs, did it, likes, did it, did it, smoking, did it, did it. So, all they want to do is get on an even keel. Mm. So what I do first thing in the morning, I have a can of Monster, and that'll... So the main drug for ADHD is Ritalin. So Ritalin is basically like speed. So if you give it someone with ADHD speed, you're going to think they're going to go mad, but they're not. It just balances them out. So all we're doing is trying to get on an even keel like everyone else. 
that's what it is. It's a constant battle. But when you've got ADHD, you hyper focus. Yeah. Because when something interests you, you've got a constant supply of dopamine all the time. So with the bodybuilding show, I've got that long goal. I will constantly be getting a buzz out of getting to that goal. I'm with you. That's my works. And it's very interesting. So let's go. Let's go back to uh, the to the drama. So you didn't you didn't think it was something for for you? Um, no, just sort of like people like me didn't do that type of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And and when when you say people, you know, when you say you're watching it on TV, what what were you watching? Because for me, growing up, obviously, I'm 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 more interested in the comedy side of things. Although, yeah, I love films too. But w- was was your main interest? Was it sort of comedy characters, which is what you've become become very well known for in the city, or was it all kinds of all kinds of drama and so on? No, I, I mean. No, I, I think going back to ADHD, I think what happens is you use comedy as a, as a survival thing. You, you, you use it to survive in, in, in certain dynamics and stuff. And you, um, you learn to be funny. You learn what gets a response, but you use that as a... But I can't say inspired to be like anyone. I wasn't that interested in comedy. The only com- the first comedy that really got me and made me go was Phoenix Nights. Like, that was the first time, like, okay... And then the office and and Steve Coogan and Alan Partridge, so if they're the three people I inspire to be like, yeah, yeah. So they're the only comedies I really watch or I like. Yeah, I'm not a big comedy fan. And really. what about and what about stand up? I know I know you're doing a lot of MCing at the moment as well. Peter Kay stand up. Yeah. yeah, that's probably the only stand up show I've really watched. I'm not like um, I've never really been into it. I can't sit still long enough. Yeah, do you know what I mean? You like the way Peter Kay sort of builds those scenes up, you know, he brings in, you know, yeah, back in the day it was did stories about Din Ladies or his dads or whatever. You, it's very performative, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and related to a lot of that. Oh, that's me! That, you know, so it was, yeah. it was relatable and stuff like that, so, yeah. Well, I'm not a massive stand-up fan. Well, we'll get we'll get into like you know the, the acting and, and a bit more um, a bit more around your characters in a sec. So you've, you've got a brief period between sort of, you, I know you, you said you started your business um, when you were about 25, 26. <laughs> yeah. And for anyone so, that doesn't know, that was the barbershop. Barbers, yeah. So it was like, when I left school, like all my family are builders and stuff like that, so I got loads of good opportunities, like trainee this, trainee that, did it, and I didn't really succeed at any of them. And I felt like a bit of a failure. And I'd, um, yeah, I'd become a bit of a loser. And when I was 20, 21, I thought, I'm going to be a barber, I'm going to learn to be a barber. Because I thought I'd enjoy it. It was creative, da da da. But everyone, barbering was dying out then. It was like barber. It was like dead unusual. Like barber. You know what I mean? And like you'd be out and you go, yeah, I'm a barber. And you go, are you a barber? Now they're everywhere. There's probably probably a barber in this room. Just everyone, you know, loads of people do it. And um, people presumed I was gay as well because I was going to be a barber. But anyway, I, I really loved it. it. It grabbed me attention. I, I enjoyed it. I focused on it. And then. I worked in a shop on Breck Road, Jack's with Ralph, and just sort of potted around in different shops to get experience. And then three years after starting, I opened my own shop, Sweeps on County Road. And I only started off with one share. And within like three years, I had like, well, not when it was about four years, five years. So I moved into a bigger shop. And then I had six chairs, and I had a coffee shop attached to it as well. But it was all like 1920s Art Deco style. Yeah. And yeah, I give it me all, and I made it the best it could be. Well, going back to the to the uh, ADHD points, you that was your that was your baby. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, know, I know the moment I lost interest in it, but we we I smashed it. I done really well. I had like six full time barbers. Like, what was the moment? I was in a coffee shop, and there was a there was a family in the corner. It was chocker. The two shops of chocker. And there was a, a kid eating an ice cream, and then there was all these other people, da 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 da, da and the, ba- the coffee shop was shocking, the barbers was rammed, and I just stood there, and I got dead overwhelmed, and I went, I've done it. I completed that image I'd been chasing since I was 21, I'd done it, and that was the moment I was like, the fire and value went out. I'd achieved my goal, but I had no fire anymore because I had nothing to get up for now. So I stayed in the shop, but the passion was not there anymore, it was stagnant. I'd climb that mountain. I needed a new mountain. But then I was stuck in the mountain because I was getting money each week and it was like sand. But 
I wasn't yeah. I wasn't getting that dopamine. I wasn't getting that. I had no fire in my belly, and it made me sad. So you, you've you've sold the shop now. You've moved yeah. you've moved on from the shop. But along the way, there you said before we came in about twenty six, twenty seven. You started doing yeah the, the actors. So what 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 made you make that change? Did you just not give a shit anymore about what other people thought? It wasn't about what other people thought. It was how I thought about myself. I thought people like me don't do that. But um, what how it started? I used, this customer used to come in, and um, he wanted to do acting, but he didn't want to go on his own. So he kept kind of trying to encourage me, you know, because it was always funny and whatever. And I was like, oh, I can't, because I just opened my shop. I was focused on that. And he was like, I'll oh, come to this class in Manchester. I was like, no. <laughs> and then he went, I've signed you up for this school. You've got an audition next week. And I was like, why? Anyway, I went. So I had lines. I had to learn lines. And I was like, I feel like an actor. And I went and I got in the school. And... Uh, the first class, I was with this girl, Claire Dean. It was the second class. I was with this girl, Claire Dean. I got paired up to do a scene with her. And I remember I was doing a scene with her and I got lost in it, genuinely. It was like every, nothing else, everything else had gone. It was, it was like I was in the middle of a tornado. It sounds mad, I don't know. But I just got lost in that moment and I come out of it and everyone was like, I'm working with you next week. And uh, that's when I fell in love with her. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. And then you had a new. A new passion. It's the one thing. Mm, I don't know why it's the one thing. I've been completely consistent with that because I haven't achieved it yet. I haven't climbed that mountain. But that is the one thing that has always been constant. Well, 15, 16 years, that has been constant. So you, you, talked, about, sorry, mate, you talked about the image in a barbershop and you thought that was the image and that's done now. Yeah. What's the image? What's of, the, of the acting? What? Yeah. I don't know. I didn't know what the Im I don't know. I don't know, yeah. What you mean what level do you want to go to? What's what yeah, what's the image? What's the image in your head that acting will be completed for John May? And you can be oh, honest, is it I don't know. Is it an Oscar? Is it a BAFTA? I don't know. I don't know. But you'll know it when you get there. Yeah, it's the same with the barbers. I didn't know that little boy eating the ice cream. Da, da, da. But when well, I done the body well, God help us when you when you've completed acting, John. <laughs> what well, the next thing? Clocked is. it. <laughs> no, like even when I done the bodybuilding show, I had an image in my head. I had an image in my head like this was a proper image, and I had my arms up like that with a medal around my neck, like that. And I always had that image because I was really overweight, and I just wanted to be worthy to stand up there. Do you know what I mean? I just wanted to have not looked out of place. I come about five out of about seven, something like that, which is sad. And uh, I actually got the image, like someone took a photo and I was like, no way, that's the image. So, with acting, it's like I've been to every audition that I get on. Like, I've been to, like, some weeks that I was going to London five times in a week. It was costing me a bomb, never mind the time. And I, I've always been consistent and I've always given me all. Now, I've had loads of close calls. I can act. I can. So, therefore, I've got that talent and that skill. But it my... Um, it's always... My... my my career is in someone else's hands. So no matter how many castings I'm going to go to, I always thought eventually I will get it. But it's been 15 years now. It's in someone else's hands. So the only way for me to move forward, really, is I need to take control of that. So what I thought was I need to create my own stuff. So I wrote a short film called Just, and it's about the Catholic Church, and it's about... This man who loses his baby, blah blah blah, and he goes to the church and he he has a he has a gripe with God and he, he blah blah blah. So that was the plan, and I wanted to write this short film which I wrote, and I wanted to film it. I wanted to go to the BFI, get funding, make that, win an award, get funding for a film, put me in it, da, 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 boom, job done, and we all go back and have a pint, right? So I was prepping for that, and then lockdown come, I was like, all right, can I sod low that? So then I just started doing sketches at home. Um, started off with this woman, Karen Corona, because I seen lockdown like Christmas, so it was like everyone was getting ready. 
you're all done, you're all ready for lockdown, do you know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, gonna get a few bits and all that. And that's what I sort of done, but then I had a captive audience. So I'd done the first one as a little thing and that done well, and then I'd done another one. And it then I started with a bit of a narrative, because then I brought a fella in. But when I brought Kenny Corona in, I'd done this video about, um, he's talking about conspiracy theories and stuff, and it just went mad. Like I went to Asda, and I, I, I seen these taxi drivers all laughing in a huddle. What are they laughing at? And they were laughing at me. <laughs> I thought it was fun. Did that shit gear on or something? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were laughing at you looking at Hold the phones. <laughs> yeah. No, but they were, they were watching me in a video. And I thought, that's mad. Yeah, I got so that. So that's sort of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Well, um, let's talk a little bit though about numbers. Because I know like it's a numbers game a lot on social media now. So like, did you go overnight from sort of... Oh yeah, I think I had 4,000 followers. And then within like four months, I had 50,000. And um, sort of peaked there, there we go. But um, yeah, so it went up and then... Been on the Scouse house, no most, so... I know, I smashed Watch it. Watch your take off. Smashed it. Yeah. yeah. Been invited back to the school. I'm on the Scouse <laughs> house. With our Andy. So, so you've done Kenny Corona, Karen Corona, and I think, I don't know if this is quite right, but certainly, like, uh, my personal favourite is probably, probably uh, Turkey Teeth. I don't know if he's got a proper surname now. I know he's Keith. Isn't he? He needs a proper surname. You can't call him Keith Teeth. Oh, yeah. He's got a surname, has he? <laughs> we'll give him a surname. I'm sure you will as, as the character grows. But um, he's the one that, uh, would you say, you're most synonymous well, with? Well, what happened was, like, with that narrative started to grow and like, Kenny Corona got kidnapped and people were putting posters in the windows and stuff like that. You know, have you seen Kenny Corona? I based it on Shannon Matthews going missing. And right. I don't like it. Because... I know she never she never really got missing. She was hid under a bed. I just find there's loads of comedy and that whole thing, like Karen Matthews, and yeah. I'm a little bit thingy by it. And he was a there, was a, there was a show up in Edinburgh called the the, the Shannon Matthews you musical or something that. like yeah, that. I've seen yeah, that. But yeah. anyway, Craig, the character was actually based on Craig Meenan, who was Karen Matthews's boyfriend. She's got the glasses and stuff like that. Is that an exclusive or? I don't know, I've said it before. Oh. But that's who he was based on because they introduced Craig on a Sky News reporter done on anyway. Anyway. So, I'd done all that, and I finished it, and I left it. I thought, just leave now, John, just leave it. It was fun. Da, 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 da. And then people were like, oh, I want more. And I was like, oh, no, just leave on a high. And then um, I thought, right, okay, well, I'll do another series called Who's Derek? So I got Craig and Derek, two unlikely friends, put them together. But Derek was a drug dealer, and Kenny Craig was just was naive. So and that's he, a little bit of a callback to an advert that you did, isn't it? Who's Derek? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's Derek? Yeah, it was an advert. Purple, Who's Derek? Purple Bricks. Everyone says Purple Bricks. It's how simple. Was it? Mm. Shows you the power of advertising. Hello. <laughs> Go uh, on. And then, um, so I'd done like a few sketches with them and their unlikely friendship. And then I brought in another character called Turkey Seat. And when I brought him in, everyone just loved him. And it just went, it just went, whoosh, it went up again. So we'd, we'd say, talk me through the, the process of, of creating a character like Turkey Seat. Because I think, I've said this to you before. Ah, okay. as a, 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 a kind of quite unique there's not many there is a few but there's not that many comedy characters who are quite unlikable and I don't th- I don't think he's a nice character women love him yeah maybe I could woo any woman dressed as Turkey do you reckon it's weird they, they melt <laughs> yeah. even Darren Till I've done a podcast you've, with Darren Till what you've seduced him no but it's like even he said he said oh. John I'm not scared of any men or I'm not intimidated by anyone, but the minute you put them teeth in, I yeah. go to bits. That's what he said. <laughs> but, yeah, so how, how do you, that's obviously you've observed people because I think yeah. people know... So, it's, it's all the other characters, the... like Kenny, Karen, Craig, Derek, whoever, they're all a part of me. They are an extension of me. They are, like, if you read deep into what I've actually done. But then Turkey, he's not me. Um, I probably slowly started to tear into him, to be honest with you. But, <laughs> <laughs> what's it called? Reality thing. Art oh, imitating life, yeah. yeah. Um, but he's external. I had to learn him. So I based him on a few people. And it's, I based him on around three people. And then, well, two out of the three people have come up to me and said, it's funny, you get people, you get divvies like that, don't you, John? Yeah, bad divvies, lad. And I'm like, I oh, know. 
It's based on them, and I'm laughing inside. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm fuming because you haven't brought your gear with you. But just uh, give me a few things about how do you get into Turkey when you when you're doing them? Uh, like how are you getting into? It? It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? Sorry, just burst your mic, lads. Um, <laughs> the energy went up in the room, <laughs> and I got an erection for sure. I don't uh, know. So you, you, I think it's. I don't know. Just do a little laugh. Yeah. The teeth help. It sounds different <laughs> when I've got teeth in. It adds to it. But I do transform into him. It's weird. Yeah. And what about what about your other one, um, Craig from the Whittle? Yeah, Craig. He's, he's that's certainly embracing the, the full Scouse, uh, Scouse um, nation there, isn't it? Including including the Whittle. Yeah, originally Craig, the idea with Craig was he was meant to sound like a Scouser, and then suddenly he just like you know he he talk normal, and then suddenly you say tomorrow, and it's like you go. <laughs> So you think he's a scout and you go, so you always know where someone's... Where are you from, mate? Liverpool? Whereabouts? Um, and did it, and then, like, you'll drop the out. And, like, you know what I mean? So it gives a, a, few, a few, few other words. Well, you know, saw, tomorrow, what is it? Tomorrow. tomorrow. Like, a boy Cray was, like, Solero, um, <laughs> Cornetto, um, Polo, Bay oh. Punto. It's just the O's. Uh, have you had any feedback from, from people from the Whittle on, on, the, on the accents? On the, on the character? He is a, he's a bit of a divvy, isn't he? Ah, oh, he's just like he's just lovable, isn't he? Yeah. Women love him. Insecure women love him because they know he'll nail, he'll never leave them. So you got loads of women who want to look after Craig. Yeah. Mm. So, so give us a little bit of a uh, give us a little bit of Craig. Craig. Um, how do you get into how do you get into Craig as a character? I don't know. It just happens. But when you put the glasses on, I feel like him more. But uh, Derek's the best. I like Derek. So you you might remember you hosted a show. You, you will remember you hosted one of my laugh hard comedy clubs in yeah. in Crosby there, John. I you, necked you, your nana. He, he did. He necked, I me necked nana. your nana. Yeah. I've necked your nana. In a way, you've proven that you did you, you did seduce there an eighty six year old uh, as as Turkey. As she, was, she loved it. But do you remember you got you got smashed towards the end of the gig? So you uh, I was you, you, you went back on as Craig. I was nervous <laughs> and spoke like Turkey, didn't you? I did, yeah. <laughs> It just become a mix, a mishmash. I think that's all we've got time for for part one with John May. We're going to be back with more. We're going to get him a little snack, some baked goods maybe, and uh, and we'll be back with more in part two with John May. Okay, we're back for part two with John May. John, you've got a decision on your hands know, here, mate. I've noticed you've I've just, my heart's been racing since you brought them out of your pocket. Yorkie, yeah. It's not for girls, right? Or is it anymore? I don't know. Can't say that. I know. Cut that out, Andy, please. Um, but that's basically, this is like, like, what? Raisin and biscuit, that's like a... I'll have the purple one. It, that, that's like a health Just snack, purple. isn't it? Can I tell you a story about Yorkies? Please do. I went to the, um, I went on a bit of a date... And I went to Yorkshire. I went to York. Classic John May, yeah. Yeah. I went to York and I blagged the girl. <laughs> I said, Yorkies originate from York, you know. Like, that's why they're called Yorkies. Well, that is the, that, that is the nickname for a person from, from Yorkshire. I, I just made the story up and it turned out it was absolutely completely true. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. The Yorkie factory yeah. is in York and they originate from York. So it makes sense. I, I just and my lie was that good. It come, it was true. Yeah, nice. Can I eat this? You can do, yeah. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. You're so thoughtful of you. Yeah, I'm just a thoughtful guy, aren't I? That was such a that's such a like Crosby Yorkie raisin and biscuits. Well, I, well, well, I went with you know if you wanted to go um, original, so that's you could such have... a middle class Yorkie. That. So John, we were talking before you you started create, creating. Your, your characters and, and, and you said basically taking your career into your, whole, your own hands mm. in, in a way and, and it, it's worked hasn't it mate because doing, well, sh- doing the shows in the Olympia and then the Camp of Fairness and other big acting jobs subsequently on the back of that mm. um, you were doing the, you were doing merchandise I thought that classic story and this is a very I think this is a very scouse thing John you were hand delivering your merchandise, weren't you? Kind of at the, at the peak of you know, yeah. Twitter. What was that like? Dra- driving around the city in character, handing out t-shirts. <sighs> Do you know what? I right? so what? I just uh, the idea was I'll turn up as Turkey, 
and deliver your Christmas, you know, as I go, girl, and all that. And deliver it, you know, just it. But sometimes you knock at doors dressed as turkey, and like the girl who's ordered it's fella that's answered the door, and he'll be like, all right, miss. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just so embarrassing. Did, but you, sometimes did you keep it up or did you drop it? I just, I just run with it. I just blag it. You know what I mean? They <laughs> had no idea who it was. So go on, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Go ahead. Bang, bang, bang. It's happening, you know, right? Yeah, yeah, mate. Yeah. All right, mate. <laughs> what is it? I've got a jump run off you. If you bird, lads. <laughs> <laughs> That was shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, that thing right about corruption on set, you must make people laugh quite a lot on set, do you? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, what, what, no. I'm not even that funny. I'm a miserable bastard. Yeah, well, I want to I wanna, uh, do, I want to hail some scouse insults back and forth at each other and see if we can oh, keep, God. see if we can keep composure under, under the pressure of the cameras, yeah. So you want to do a quick fire? Quick is fire. That, is it like a comedian competition? In, insults, I guess so. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, but like no, but it's more of an act. It's more of an acting thing, isn't it? Trying to keep a, trying to keep it straight face, not killing the scene. You little beaut. You little butt. You little Texan. Fucking melt. Blair. Your dad sells Avon, lad. Your dad sells plasters on Walton Vale. Your mouth's been banged more times. No, your mouth felt more balls than Bruce Grobler. Your mouth sank the Titanic, lad. Your mouth's dead, Andy. <laughs> You're a fucking weapon. Not <laughs> 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 I think I went first there. Uh, you are. Uh, I think I went first anyway. <laughs> so, so you, you're delivering, you're delivering your merch all around the city, and that's yeah, as I say. You, and, and then these big shows that you did in the city, some big venues. Yeah. What were done, those shows? You are. What were some of those shows that you've done? So we done far? Hangar Thirty Four, which is great. You done that for four nights. Four nights sold down, sixty seconds. How many people? Boom! It was two hundred a night. It was COVID. But still, that was great. And then we done the Olympia two nights in a row as well. That was great. That was fifteen hundred a night there. Wow. Done a little tour. And you had uh, like you had it was like a party atmosphere, wasn't it? A DJ. Oh on. yeah, like Billy Clements spinning. Yeah, like loads of stand ups got in touch with me. And were like, you want a DJ on before you before you think? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'd never done nothing like this before. They were like. Um, that's not a good idea, you know, John. I was like, why? Because the idea is that you want them settled in that, you know what I mean? I was like, nah, 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 it's sad, you know. And um, it worked. It, it was fine. Yeah. It was fine. P. Price, can I tell you a story about P. Price? P. Price phoned me and went, John, it's Pete! I was like, hi, Pete, you know what I mean? Like, Shut the fuck up and listen to me. He said, you, you, um, <laughs> He said, you, I went to your show and the, your audience are vile, vile. These are people I would cross the road to avoid. Anyway. This is Pete Bryce. Yeah. And um, he said, and you had a DJ on and you had them on. No one's, I have never seen a stand-up or a comedian in the land do that. And he said, he said, the minute you walked on stage, they all had respect for you and they all, listen to every word you said and he said I've never ever seen that in all the years I have been a broadcaster I've never seen that if you would like to see some of the best new comedians in the northwest get yourself down to Laugh Hard Comedy at Rock Salt hosted by me Andy Roach AJ.Roachy laughhard.co.uk for tickets I'll see you there you worked with Mr. John Bishop on yes. on, on Doctor Who. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was on Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah, I was you with John Bishop. Mr. Bish. Have we? Heard? How was that? I've, do, I've worked with them all. I've worked with them all. Worked with me. I've worked with Bishop. Jason Mansford. I've worked with Johnny Vegas. I've also worked with John Bishop. Who else? Andy Sandberg, Greg Davis. Um, I was in a thing called Fresh Meat. Yeah, they were all they were all there. Oh, they were all there. Oh yeah. Work them all. 
Fresh Meat with John May. Sounds about right, doesn't it? Yeah. But yeah. What are you trying to make out? You, you told me before, like, all of your characters, the guy. women swoon. Oh, Andy, I've got it, mate, and that's that. You either got it or you haven't. That's it true. Off. That's true. Um, so, John, what, what's, what, what have you been up to lately, then? I just walked the whole length of the country for a laugh. Why'd you do that? Midlife crisis. Sold me shop, sold everything. They did a caravan six months leading up to it and I just got off. Some mad stuff must have happened along the way. I know it did. You went. You were going to have a support van with you at some point. No, I wanted a wild pack. camp the whole way, me. I wanted that's the idea. Like a few people talked me out of it, and we had a camper van. And then the camper van went, and then um, I started the camp. And then Tim Edwards joined me. Um, so Tim Edwards, his daughter was unfortunately killed last year on uh, Christmas Eve. And on the will, and he said, "Can he join me for a couple of days?" And then he ends up coming with me from Worcester all the way up to John O'Groat. So it was cool. Yeah, it was. It's yeah. It, it, do you know what? I'm like, I'm quite fortunate to have experienced that because my eyes have been, my eyes are wider, which is great for the experience. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. You learn. You learn a lot. The funniest thing that happened on your on your travels. Uh, the funniest. Um, I don't know. I've seen Prince William. It's quite random. He drove past me. I was like, no way, it's Prince William. Did he give you a beep? No, no. no. Rat. I see. It can't beep everyone, can he? <laughs> <laughs> was, was he driving? No. Oh. He had staff. Right. But yeah, I was like, that's that's a quick take. That, how did you. That, did, that, do you know, are you sure it was Prince William it was or Prince, what? He had, he had a thing and all that. Da, 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 yeah. Outriders. Is that what they're called? Police at the front on the yes. bikes. Yeah. Down a country lane, down a B road. Yeah. So what, what was it what was it like when you got to Scotland? You actually finished it finished up with it? Um I didn't want it to end. I did want it to end, but it didn't. I was excited it was ending. But I remember the last mile, I was like, let's just stop for a bit, Tim. We just didn't want it to end. But but we did, because mm. we knew it was over. It was a real life adventure. Yeah. And have you got some, have you got the next thing now? What's in your What's in your crosshairs? I'm starting a production company. That's what I'm doing. That's me next. That's me new hyper focus. That's me new drug. Well, let's plug the shit out of it, baby. What's it called? Yes, it's called Progress Pictures. Yes, me and my friend Owen, who I've always done my comedy uh, with and whatever. I else. know Owen, great yes. lad. Yeah. Forgot to mention, you used to come to my acting class, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I basically came to John's acting classes for six months just so he'd do one show. I know, I knew it. that's why he'd done it. Because yeah. I said no. And he... he you know, in a headlock and he said, you're doing it. a Rottweiler. Like, <laughs> in the end, just went, yeah! <laughs> and when you left, he went, fuck's sake, oh, what honest to God. But you're a man of your word. And you turned up. I and did. a beautiful friendship has blossomed, hasn't it? And I got very drunk, and now I'm banging you now. Well, the banging are banged. Let's get serious, John. Wow. It's the part of the show everyone wants to wants to know who was John May picked as his top scousers. You gone for three. It's controversial. You gone for three. Are you controversial? It is controversial. I like, but I like a bit of controversy. How long have Why we got? Because I've got stories. You've got oh, 10 minutes or so. So okay. who's in at number three? Ringo Starr. I, like I love it. him. I like him because he's a maverick. Because he doesn't give a fuck. And he got criticised because he, um, Jonathan Ross said, um, "What do, do you miss Liverpool?" He went, "No," and he said, "He says sort of like, would you?" And it's like a lot of people took that personal. A lot of people didn't like it, but he's living on a beach in fucking LA. <laughs> you bring me a scouser who would not rather live on a fucking beach in LA, but it's true, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And it's like, I, I get on this, and like people say, "What's he done for the city?" or "What have the Beatles done for the city?" Let me just tell you the story real quick. I watched this documentary about Sylvester Stallone um, and he was in Philadelphia and he filmed Rocky there and this fellow was a Rocky impersonator and he went to the house where they filmed Rocky and this guy comes up and he's going, fuck Stallone, he's done nothing for Philadelphia, did it and all that, he goes, fuck, and they're like, fuck him, fuck him, fuck him like that and I thought, who 
Because all these people in the area thinking Sylvester Stallone's just used Philadelphia. I went, I done like a tour around America, me, and I went to Philadelphia for one reason and one reason only. Because that's where they done Rocky. And I spent about $300 that day. So therefore, Sylvester Stallone has done stuff for Philadelphia. He got $300 out of me for Philadelphia. And that's what the Beatles have done in the pool. So you can hate him, but I just think he's funny as fuck. Have you got a little Stallone impression in you, or...? No. No. Oh, you were crap, clearly. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> One more. <laughs> Lost it. <laughs> in at number two. <laughs> Pete Price. I, what? I like Pete Price, because, he again, he's like... Hello! <laughs> well, I won! I like Pete Price. I keep... Yeah, I do, because... He takes shit, and he knows how to use it. He's embraced the lizards, right? He's embraced <laughs> that. And he's he survived. He's done this in a game, in the hardest game in the world, and he's still gone. There's a lot to learn from Pete Price. We had this colleague from The Guide on, Rachel Rose, and she said no one's actually sure whether he, he actually likes being called a lizard or not, which I think, as you say... He's leaned into he's it. He's leaned into it. He's used it. And he's he's been a supporter of yours. Yeah, he's 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 been lovely to me. Yeah, we done this thing, Kenny's Christmas Carol, and he he come along and he and he filmed. He played the he played the ghost of Christmas past. And um, yeah, and you know what? He phoned me all the time. I was on my walk, and he was dead. And I won't forget that. I appreciate that. I like Pete Price. Pete Price, you're the top scouser as far as John Ray's concerned. And in at number one, he's actually a scouser. But well, you did, you did say it was going to be controversial. Yeah, he's not a scouser, and he's more of a scouser than most scousers, and it's King Kenny Dalglish. Well, he's you're not going like to have your, any complaints here, John. He's just your granddad. He's just like, you grew up with him. Do you know what I mean? I spent two weeks with Kenny Dalglish. My first acting job, I got a job with Kenny Dalglish, and he does nothing but swear. And it was like hearing Jesus swear. <laughs> he's like, yeah, what the fuck? What's going on? Anyway... <laughs> We um we were in the after six days, actually. We were filming there, I was in a film. Me and Neil fit tomorrow's. And like obviously it was like Kenny and all that. So it was me, Neil, Paul McGrattan, who was Gerard's best mate at the time, and then Kenny. And they're all like that, but I'm just like first acting job, didn't even know it was actually blagged my way to get that job. This big 30 million pound film and I've never acted before. And I got the job. Anyway, we were in the after take and he's like, I'm just standing, and he's going, join! John and I go, me. I was just blown away like that. Kenny was just shouting me. Do you know what I mean? It was mad. What was he shouting you for? I can't. It was something trivial. Can't remember. But it was like no way. What a special moment. John Andrew, legend. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>